So there's one major piece of work left, apart from, of course, the bug fixing. Last time we got the pen controller working so that we can now detect touches on the screen and get back the raw values from the touchscreen controller. Unfortunately, these don't do us a lot of good because we have no way to turn them into pixel coordinates that Gem wants. So what we have to do is to figure out how to calibrate and map the touch screen into pixel coordinates. Now, this is actually pretty hard, but luckily Cypress has this handy document which goes into all the physics and all the maths and eventually comes up with this convenient page full of formulae and rather more usefully, this sample code. So what this is, is uh, there's a routine here which converts the touchscreen controller values into pixel coordinates and there's this routine here that calculates the vector of coefficients that C index here that this routine needs. So what we're going to have to do is to integrate this code into our pen controller stuff so that when something happens we can read the touch screen, turn it into pixel coordinates and pass it to Gem. And we're also going to have to write a program that allows the user to calibrate the touch screen because the, the calibration coefficients will be different from device to device. So that's going to be fun. The way I'm going to do that is to write a standalone Atari ST program that runs under TOS. I've got here some boilerplate for a very simple program that simply opens the connection to the graphics system, clears the screen, and then waits for mouse press. It turns out that Atari TOS has quite a sophisticated abstract graphics system uh, called VDI. All these V underscore prefixes are talking to VDI. And it will handle uh, bitmap displays, printers, off-screen bitmaps, meta files, etc. So uh, we're going to be working with that. I'm not going to write a full-on AES program because that seems hard. However, in order to speed things up a bit, I'm not developing on the Alpha Smart itself. Instead, I've got this Atari ST emulator running Emutos so that I can simply compile our program. It turns into this binary here, which is actually surprisingly big due to the toolchain I'm using, but that's fine. And if we run it, we get a blank screen, wait for a mouse click, exit back to uh, Gem. So I think this has got all we need to actually make the thing work. So let's actually start some work on this. So let's copy our, uh, our program into utils. Utils isn't quite right, uh, tools, I think. So, uh, tools, Dana, Cal, C. Uh, here is the command line needed to actually build the thing. It uses the Atari Mint toolchain. This is why the binaries are so big. There's quite a lot of Mint POSIX emulation code that we're not using. Uh, luckily, the binaries it makes are still compatible with TOS. Uh, there's a gem library that is actually a third-party thing. It's not part of EmuTOS. And we just compile the program into a PRG, copy it into our Atari ST hard disk image, and we're done. So let's just alter that a little. Cal. Uh, 
uh, oh yeah, I put it in tools. Okay. Run the emulator. Drive C. Danacal.prog. It is in fact the same binary. Okay. So what are we going to do here? Well, here's the existing boilerplate code. First, create a AES VDI application and we get back a handle that I don't think we use. Open a handle to the graphics system. This takes four parameters, which are the screen bounds that we get back that we're ignoring. Then we open a virtual workstation. A workstation is a VDI thing you draw on. And a virtual workstation is a workstation that's multiplexed on top of the actual screen. Uh, the interface is kind of primitive. It takes and returns an array of shorts. And here we are setting up the, the input block, which contains information about what screen type we want, the coordinate system, and here we're using native pixels. And all these ones indicate the uh, the default types of things like drawing patterns and so on. We have some documentation here. So let me find the uh, VDI control, open virtual workspace. Uh, so line type, color, markers, fonts, etc, etc. And what we get back are some stuff that we really don't care about. Uh, no, hang on, this is still input. All oh, right, this is for printers, we don't care about that. Right, this is what we get out. And the two things we care about are the first two coordinates, which is width and height. So let's just, uh, these are all short, sign 16-bit values. Um, we don't care about any of this. We might care about things like uh, character sizes. Don't think those are returned actually. Oh, here we go. Now that's minimum and maximum. No, I don't think we care about that. Uh, these two lines of code are where you actually draw on the screen. First, we turn the mouse pointer off. Uh, if you draw on the screen with the mouse pointer enabled, it'll corrupt the area under the mouse pointer. Uh, then we clear the workspace completely. Uh, then we enter a simple loop that just keeps polling the mouse until a button is pressed and then we exit. So uh, let's actually make some of these things global. WK is the handle for our workspace. Uh, and let's try and draw a line. So VDI uh, Do you want the graphics library? These do not do what I think they do. These are all to do with drawing gem user interface elements. So I think we want, here we go, BDI output functions. And I believe not all of these are available out of the box. We might need to load uh, extra uh, modules to make things like ellipses work. But luckily we don't care about any of them. All we want is to draw a line p line connects all points with lines that draws a 
polygon bar filled rectangle cell array draws a rectangular array defined by the input parameter okay not sure what that's for uh, this is drawing text justified text that'll be useful interesting there should be a line somewhere Oh, I think I know where the line stuff is. Oh no, these are the ones that you need to load the extension module for. So there's the line A uh, interface. This uses uh, virtual opcodes to allow a program to do things without having to go to the trap interface. And I have a bit of a feeling that lines are in there. Unless you're supposed to do it with this. I don't want to use line A, if possible, from C, because it's tricky. But I think... Yeah, let's just try this. Let's make a helper. Uh, so, assuming that this is XY pairs, we're just going to do put ignore to equals six one Y one. Uh, v P line workspace handle number of points and the address of the array. Okay, so let's now just try doing from naught naught to x max y max, and let's see what this does. Well, it compiles, which is a good start. Hooray, we have a line. Excellent. So, uh, what we are going to do is, if I find that, um, that document, this will actually calibrate any three points, provided you can give it the pixel coordinates and the touchscreen values. Uh, but it works best if the points are arranged approximately like this, uh, so that you end up having 10% of the screen margin on all sides. The, uh, the, Parmos, it, the Parmos's own calibrator wants a point there and a point there, and then a point in the middle. I think it's actually doing two-point calibration, but we're going to follow the instructions here. So we need to calculate where our three points are. And we are going to... Uh, so this Green X's three and uh, touch screen X's three. So this is going to be first point ten percent of the X and 10% of the Y. Second point, 50% of the X ninety percent of the Y. 
Oops, that should be a one. Third point. Ninety percent of the X and fifty percent of the Y. And we are going to create a helper that draws a touchable crosshair at the location given. So this is actually pretty straightforward. It's just going to be um, x minus 10 to y to x plus 10 y. And then the same for the other direction. So that will be crosshair SX naught, SY naught, like this. See, so much faster than downloading something to the board. And that produces garbage crosshairs. Uh, that should be a plus. Okay, so we have some crosshairs. Now, uh, we want to be able to tell the user which one to touch. So we're going to put a um, another parameter on, which if I can find my documentation again is here. Can we draw Yes, draws an unfilled rectangle with rounded corners. And I'm guessing this is two coordinates. So, x minus 15, this is top left. Input and this shall be true, false, false. And in order to get proper booleans in C, you need to include std bool. Okay, that is pretty much what we want, although um, I have forgotten to do this. Okay, so one of them is now highlighted. And that's quite a nice rounded rectangle, to be honest. Okay, so let's do a bit of refactoring. We're going to want to draw the screen multiple times, so let's make a function to actually do it. So, and we are going to make a counter which is the 
which target the user is pointing at. C99 in order to get the nice for loop structure. So that compiled. Okay. Uh, it'd be also nice to have a message show. So let's figure out how to draw text. And I'm betting we want this one. Uh, oh no, this does justified text. I thought this would allow centered text. So to draw text, you want this. in the default font. But we want this centered, so we're going to have to figure out how wide that string is. Uh, how do you do this? It sounds like an inquiry function to me. is put back the cell width for the specified character so just one character uh, extent returns the minimal bounding box of the string okay so So let's calculate the bounding box. And we should get in the output array the size. And the string is in the first quadrant. That's a mathematical term, and I can't remember which one it is. It's Uh, go coordinates. Well, this is the BBC bite size stuff. Um, this is not really what I was looking for, but it'll do. So, given a set of crosshairs, you can divide the. Uh, does it have a proper set of crosshairs? It does not. Given a set of crosshairs, you get four zones, which are quadrants. And. They have, here we go, and they have characteristic names. So the first quadrant is here. This means that the text will have its bottom left corner at zero, zero. And so we are looking for the, the other coordinate will contain the width and the height. Uh, however, the documentation does not actually say touches both the x and y axes. Hmm. Yeah, because it's possible that the two coordinates given are in fact here and here. So I think we're going to need to do width is. Uh, output three minus output one 
height is output two minus output zero. So therefore, the we want to draw our text at that location. So let's try that. Uh, this should be extent. Okay, well, it has abjectly failed to center our line of text, unfortunately. And getting tracing from here is a little bit trickier than it looks, but let's just try this and seeing what it says, if it says anything at all. Yeah, the console's just vanished off somewhere. We might be able to use a beacon out. But honestly, I'm not sure if this particular library's got it. That will send text to the uh, the BIOS, where it should come out somewhere useful. Okay, we're going to have to do this the hard way. Yes, What I oh, that explains why that didn't work. And let's just change this function prototype to be the same as the uh, other texturing functions. Okay, uh, so that's width and height. Honestly, that's not what I expected from the width. So gem normally works in uh, Unicode 2, UCS2, where each character is two bytes. And I believe that this function converts from characters to UCS2 using this thing. But why are we getting a width of zero? X, Y, X. Why? 
not one, two. Well, for a start, I've got my width and my height the wrong way around. So now I'm puzzled as to why the height is zero. However, at least this should now be centering our text. Like so. So the idea is the user will then touch here and, well, here and here, and that will then ca calculate the calibration coefficients. Okay, so to actually do the calibration, what we're going to do is we simply spin waiting for a mouse touch. Uh, when a mouse touch occurs, we Uh, we need to, well, we know where the user's touching because they're the values we pre-calculated earlier. We're assuming the user is touching the appropriate target. So we don't need X or Y. So what we're going to do is read the touch screen somehow. We're going to get onto that bit later. Uh, advance to the next target. If we've run out of targets, stop and redraw. However, before we do anything, we're going to wait for the user to lift the stylus up again. And in fact, this will happen after reading the touch screen. So, like so. So let's run this. So click, then moves on to the next target, click, click, and the program exits. Okay. This is actually proceeding more quickly than I thought, and we may have to move on to the next stage of testing more quickly. Anyway, once we've got to this point, we now have an array containing screen coordinates and touch coordinates. So we need to calculate the coefficients and then program the touchscreen. So we go to our datasheet. Uh, the coefficients assign longs. So this is our code. Can I copy this?
Apparently I can't, at least not with this tool. Uh, sign up. Let me just see if I've done this from, if I can do this from here. The Chrome PDF viewer is slow and really annoying, but it's got a few nice features. Yes, and this is one of them. Okay, so we have some really garbled text. So to calibrate this, we're just going to need to copy the code which is what are these so TP is the touch point DP is the display okay so TP TP arrow X is TX. Uh, TP arrow Y is TY. Uh, DP arrow Y is SY. And DP arrow X is SX. And we do need to put in indexes to everything. So this is TX2, TY1, TY2. Uh, TX1, hang on, it's worth doing this, TP, TP plus 2 arrow X is TX2, uh, and the same for Y. for X uh, let's do same for D This is C index becomes C. So SX is zero minus SX, yes. See, now the code's shorter and all in one line. You can begin to see the commonalities between all the various calculations I'm very glad I wanted to understand this. OK. 
Okay, and now the same again for this axis. Now actually this is smaller and much simpler code. Okay, this is the complex one. No, it's not. No, six is the complex one. Uh. This could probably be cleaned up if the touch coordinates were all in longs rather than in uh, rather than shorts. I wonder if that's worth doing. Probably. Okay, that compiles. Um, yeah, let's change these. So then I can simply go through this and remove all of those. Right, these are actually, there are, there are bracketed expressions in these which now become much more obvious. So I can put these in the right place. Assemble that. Yes, but it's lost all the symbols. Yeah, I'm just curious to see what this code turns into. Probably not brilliant. But anyway, this now calculates the seven coefficients. So we then need to set the uh, set the touchscreen coefficients, and then we're done. And that is all the program we need for the touchscreen calibrator. And this will turn into, once compiled with a smaller tool chain, a very small program that you can just stick in your auto folder and it will get automatically executed on system startup. So click, click, and it's done. However, we do need a way to be able to read the raw value from the touch screen without going through the calibration layer and to uh, set the coefficient vectors. And the way we do this is by adding a system call to the uh, to the BIOS. And there's a BIOS layer and an X BIOS layer. And apparently the X BIOS layer is where you're supposed to put it. And here is the lookup table for them. Yeah, it's just a simple table. So adding uh No, actually, we can use this vec thing. I think we can. No, we can't. OK, I was hoping that this would be a two-way lookup table where you could give it the vector number and a callback. But actually, uh, the this is only used for debugging. 
Right, that's annoying. Maybe a BIOS call instead. This works exactly the same way. I was hoping to be able to allocate a new entry point, a new number, somewhere up high. Uh, where is that array used from? Yeah. BIOS X BIOS appears to be doing the work given the... and it gets passed in the uh, the number of entry points and the table of vectors and then this is the code that goes and looks it up last so if I were going to add more they would need to be at the bottom and I bet that something's already using these. Let me go and look, look to see if I can find a table of XBIOS entry points. So here is the list of allocated XBIOS entry points, number and who they're used by. And actually it looks like we're lucky because this block here that ends in 8D and is at the bottom of the emutas table is here. And there is actually a gap until the next allocated one. So we will just claim 80 and 8F. So um, I think this is right. if with no expression that should be if def in fact we're going to do we're going to define a new configuration symbol good Now we want to put something down here. Probably at the bottom. to C we want and this is going to be uh, raw read is going to is going to pull this the raw state of the touch screen without going through the calibration layer and calibrate is going to uh, set the uh, the calibration vectors and this is going to be x bios unimpul e 
rotate F. Okay, and now up here, Comp with touchscreen X BIOS, and then we need the two prototypes, well, the, the two trampolines for debugging. So it's going to be 80 and 8F, and our values are going to be Calibrate is going to be uh, a pointer to our seven vectors. Calibrate. Okay, so this should fail to build. Correct. We do not have prototypes of these two. And so we're going to put these in uh, here, I think. No. Do we need a new uh, touch screen header? I'd rather not. Mouse.h will do. Okay, and that now fails to build because we do not have implementations of these. So these are going to, well, really they should go in mouse.c. Uh, yeah, let's put them in mouse.c. So if comp with touch the next BIOS. In Dana, uh, Dana TS raw read X Y state. If def machine Dana, Dana TS calibrate C. Okay, and now this will fail to compile because we don't have these. So let's go back to mouse.h, copy these, go to here. Uh, where are we going to put the touchscreen stuff? Next to here, probably. Oh yeah, so these need to go in here. And these should be void. And now we need to update these because we changed the prototype. OK, 
Okay. All right, so what this is going to be doing is just this, essentially. And uh, does pen send receive? Yes, it's, it is atomic. It turns interrupts off across the call. Uh, and this is going to be uh, PF data and whatever pin this was connected to. I forgot to note down which it was, or did I? Pen interrupt, good. Okay, that is TS raw read. So TS calibrate is basically a matter of copying these seven longs into a array that we're about to define up here. So this is just going to be int i is not seven. Like this. Um No previous prototype for Dana TS raw read, Dana TS calibrate. Good, and we have an image. So now we have hopefully the X BIOS part of things, and I'm just going to. So this is not actually using the calibration vector for anything. Um, but it should give us something to test with. OK, so now if we go back to the calibration, here we need to call raw read, which Uh, we need to call a raw x BIOS function. I'm going to have to go and look at how to do that. So it's gruesome, but I think this is it. So this makes a trap 14 or x BIOS call taking a word, which is the trap number, and three longs, which are the three pointers for the parameters. So down here for the coefficients, we're going to want to do trap 14 WL, 8F is the opcode, and it takes a single parameter, which is our, the pointer to our coefficients. So this compiles into a binary. And let's just try running it. This will probably... Oh, yeah, I know what I did. Um, I, I'm i using this version of Emutos for the Aronim image. And because I did the make clean to build the, uh, the Dana version, that got rid of the ROM. So let's run this. Okay, click. 
Okay, it appears to be ignoring the uh, the extra traps, which is correct. That's what we wanted to do. Okay, so now we need to copy DanaCal onto the Dana's memory stick and uh, f try running this kernel with it and seeing what happens. So here we have the usual rather muddy video, uh, this time using a cell phone and I hope that will make things better. So if I steer the cursor over to here very carefully uh, using the keyboard and run it, Good, good. So uh, this is the point where we would normally touch the screen. However, I haven't actually done the code that hooks up the touchpad yet, which is a bit stupid. So the only way to interact with it is using the keyboard mouse. So let's just touch, 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 and back to gem. Okay, uh, well, it's good the program works. We didn't get anything here. I would expect to see more tracing. Um, so this should be set correctly. It should have hit TS raw read three times, although there's no tracing there yet. It should have hit TS calibrate, which should have gone to here, which should have called Dana TS calibrate. Um, and yes, that has actually compiled the code in, so that should have worked. And then Dana TS Calibrate should have gone to here. So we should have seen something come out. Yeah, and there is code here too. I can see it uh, calling kprintf. So that should have worked. Why has it not worked? Well, let's go over here and turn xbios debugging on. This will be quite spammy, but we should see every call to an xbios function. Is this being called? Yes, it is. Okay, well, before we do that, uh, let's just do the other half of the keyboard stuff. Now, we have to pull the touch screen. So every time a tick, we are going to Dana poll touch screen. So, Dana Paul keyboard, Dana Paul touchscreen. Void Dana Paul touchscreen. So this will be called every time a tick. And what we're gonna do is look to see whether uh, there's a pending mouse event, at which point we will decode it, calibrate it, well, convert it, 
and send it to the system. So the first thing we need to know is, uh, was the pen being touched the previous tick? The reason we need to know this is because while detecting when the pen is down is easy because we just look at the pen interrupt, when the pen comes off the screen we stop getting interrupts and we still need to send one more event with the mouse button up. And to do this we need to keep track of whether the previous touch was pressed. So if we were pressed or we are pressed then go and do the logic. At the end of the logic detect to see whether we were pressed. Sorry, detect to see whether we are pressed. So we now need to fetch the X and Y from the controller. Uh, we are then going to uh, do the mapping and we are just going to do Um, so you notice that there's this division by the zero coefficient. We're going to detect for that because if we haven't been calibrated yet this will be zero and therefore all the stuff coming out of... well we can't do this mapping because it'll end up dividing by zero so that's not going to work. So we actually want to do uh, screen x is coefficient 1 times x plus coefficient 2 times y plus coefficient 3 divided by coefficient 0. In fact, let's do So S Y is going to be that's not right. Um, let's see four times X. Let's see three uh, five times Y plus C six divided by C zero. Okay, calculate whether we're pressed or not. So that the last time through we were pressed but we're not now so pressed here will be false but of course as soon as the pen comes up the value from the touch screen is incorrect so we're actually going to want to so this will be the old coordinate So if we are pressed and we're calibrated, calculate the new coordinate. Uh, and pressed will therefore be true. If we were pressed, but we're not now, then uh, no, hang on, hang on, hang on. We are pressed now, therefore update the coordinates. If we were pressed, or are pressed now, send the state, and this is actually done through a mouse 
through call mouse fec. And this is So this is a packet of bytes. Uh, and a packet can contain either absolute or relative coordinates. And I believe that this is sending relative coordinates. So let's go and try and find someone who's doing absolute. Okay, this is always sending relative coordinates. I wonder if we can do this. So, mouse rel pause report. Are we allowed to send absolute packets? So this is sending relative coordinates. Hmm. Mouse monitoring to routines can be the uh, can return relative or absolute packets. Because, of course, the pen can only ever send absolute packets. We can fake relative packets, but only if um, we know where the pen currently is. I'm going to have to go and look something up, I think. So here's what an absolute packet looks like. It's an F7 followed by a byte for the buttons followed by X and Y. Uh, the actual button reporting is a little bit more complicated than it looks because we need to track the new state as in the old state. So Okay, so if we're pressed now, update the state. If we were pressed, or we are pressed, then we need to make our packet of six bytes uh, 
Um... So, left button down since last report is going to be true if we are pressed and we weren't pressed. Uh, left button up since last report is going to be true if we are not pressed and we were pressed. Okay. Uh, X coordinate most significant byte X coordinate least significant byte same for Y send okay and and update our state variable. Okay, I think that will do it. Does not build, oh yes. This doesn't want std bool booleans, it wants uh, Atari ST style booleans. Okay, so let's write this and see whether it works. Okay, and run. Doesn't start up immediately because there is now uh, a decompression stage to make uploads faster. Okay, drive C. Uh, Where has our program gone? There it is. And run. Okay, touch the target. Um, Well, that ain't working. Anyway, let's let's try the manual buttons to see if I can see no calls to the BIOS are being made. So it is just not working. I wonder why. So this is the uh, this is our program. I think I put debug information in. Uh, 
uh, capital D. Right, it doesn't have any uh, symbols. And Yeah, yes. Okay, so if we, instead of trying to compile everything, let's just do that. That will then create a danacal.o, which we can disassemble. Disassembling stuff before RDS. Okay, so look for main, which is here. So trap fourteen WL trap fourteen. The opcode is 8F. Let me check to make sure I got that right. 8F calibrate. The single parameter is... an address. So why is that using the data register? Yeah, C it should be a pointer. Oh, here it is, because it's an absolute value uh, that's being fixed up to an actual address. Why did I make that static? It doesn't need to be static. There we go. Better code. So opcode, here is the address of the uh, coefficient array. Here it is clearing lots of stuff. Hang on. If I stick a minus G in, yeah, we go. So every single one of these calculations has turned into a clear operation. Why has that happened? So SX, SY, TX, and TY are all longs. And these are operating in all of those. Ah, well, for a start, this should be a seven. Don't think that will help, but still not generating any code. So the reason it's doing this is because the compilers figured out somehow that none of these values are being set, which they're not because I forgot to set them up here. So this is actually going to be touch x target touch y target. There we go, and now we have lots of code for that computation. This still does not explain why it wasn't 
uh, calling the traps at all. Lots and lots of code. Yeah, lots of calls to uh, multiply, as you would expect, because this thing does not have a reasonable hardware multiply. So at least we should now be generating the right coefficients, but it does not explain why it's not actually passing in the right value. Passing in the right value? Why it's not calling the trap in the first place. Uh, let me scroll up here. So this is where it actually touches the touch screen. So we load target, we multiply it by four by doubling it twice. Uh, that's the, that's TX, that's TY. And yeah, we push the values. Okay, that should work too. One for two is eighty. So is this wrong somehow? I don't think it could be. We've got lots of references to expires on impulse, and at the end we have three references to the local text segment. B48, B4. I just managed to whack the microphone. Uh, it doesn't say what they're referring to. It, I assume it's pointing at these. I mean, there isn't really anywhere else it could go. So my suspicion is that it's not actually calling the right thing at all. Now, uh, the the binding I found. Here we go. M sixty eight K. Sorry, mint. Include mint. Last binders H. So this comes from the the mint SDK because that's what I'm actually compiling against and it has lots of bindings to the expire stuff. So I'm just using those. Now it's possible that the traps are different in mint than they are in uh, ordinary toss. This would surprise me. But that would explain what we're seeing. X Bios trap, trap 14. 
So it's falling into this code BIOS X BIOS after having set up the various vector tables and the number of entries. Well, I will try doing a clean build and also copy the new program and see what happens. Okay, let's try this. So it runs. Find the program, run the program, okay, so press, no, let's try a mouse click, nope, So this is the program that I built. The timestamp's right. If I build the Aronim ROM, and this has got debug X BIOS enabled in it. We can see X BIOS stuff show up. So when we run our program here, right, this is showing the calls. So this suggests that the program is right, one, two, one, three, two, one, uh, so if I select it and do control I, yeah, that is showing the same thing that the emulator screen is showing. I've added some tracing here, I think my logic's not quite right. So it thinks the screen is pressed. Ah, you see the red light? That indicates serial traffic. This is inverted. Okay, now we run it and see what happens. Okay, so if you touch the screen, now we get our tracing, good. Okay, so you run the program Touch. Still nothing. Fantastic. Uh, so it's possible that the desktop is only, desktop of the VDI is only listening to 
relative mouse reports. Okay, anyway, let's try here. And nothing. So we're getting it from Aronim, but we're not getting it from Emutos. But it's the same code compiled in the same way. Okay, I'm going to go look into how the VDI handles mouse movement. So I did a bit of research and I think I have managed to solve both my major problems or at least figure out the solution to the major problems. Now the first one is trying to call the XBIOS vector and I think that what's going on here is that this chunk of, of vectors comp with DMA sound is missing all the unimplemented BIOS chunks. That would then cause, if this was disabled and this was enabled, that would cause all these numbers to be in the wrong place. So that should be easily solvable by just adding lots of these. So that would start with 8, 0, and we want 13 more. Seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D. The correct solution here is to switch to using C99 designated initializers that would make all of this so much simpler. Now, the other issue was the fact that all the pen events weren't showing up in GEM. And so what I'm doing here is I'm sending uh, absolute reports indicating uh, where the mouse pointer is. Unfortunately, the VDI doesn't understand these. It only understands relative reports. So what we're going to have to do is to switch to sending relative reports and this involves figuring out where the mouse pointer was and then generating the appropriate delta. So that code is in uh, it's in the VDI as in S uh, mouse int mouse int here we go so it is somewhere around here here we go if the opcode is not F8 give up. Luckily, the actual current mouse pointer is stored in these global variables. So if I do so we can see this is, these are defined in the VDI. So if we go to here, this is a violation of layering, but never mind. Uh, EDI defs dot h I might be able to do the get the current state of the mouse pointer as well, that would be nice. I was also doing that all wrong. Okay. X and Y but no mouse pointer. Yeah, we'll just track that ourselves. So this is F8 relative report. Uh, if the pen is down, then set the left button. Therefore, packet 2 is going to be the X delta, which I believe is going to be this. And packet 3 is the Y delta, which is going to be that and the packet is only four bytes wide. So that may or may not work. The tricky thing is that as the screen is 560 pixels wide and 160 pixels deep, then if the user touches the left side of the screen and then the right side of the screen, the delta here is going to be too big. 
So, let us calculate the delta and uh, let's see, while dx is not naught and dy is not naught then we're going to repeatedly send uh, deltas until something happens um, and the actual amount we want to send is going to be uh, the maximum value that we are allowed to send, which is uh, minus 127 to 128 for a signed byte. And actually, before I do that, I will just go and check. Yes. See, here it is reading a byte from the data packet, sign extending it to a word, and then adding it on to the existing coordinate. So what we are going to want to do is uh, greater than less than minus one two eight greater than 127 ddx equals 127 else ddx equals dx and then we do the same thing again for y then we send the packet then we subtract what we've sent and loop again. Now, this is still not quite right. This is slightly trickier than it appears. The reason why it's not right is that what we're sending here is we're setting the button depending on whether the screen is currently pressed. The issue is that if the user touches the left side of the screen and then touches the right side of the screen, the first time through the loop when we send the maximum possible delta, the button will be pressed. And then the second time through the loop, the button will still be pressed. So the effect will be that the user has just dragged the mouse pointer right very rapidly. So sending was pressed is actually more correct. but this will of course not uh, have the button pressed at all. What we could do is use was pressed and then once we finish the loop we send yet another packet using is pressed and zero zero. I mean it's ugly. Uh, what happens if the mouse pointer is coming up? Well if the mouse pointer is coming up then the stylus is touching the screen and therefore the user can't move it particularly quickly so I don't think we need to worry about that case. So this is actually sending too many packets. Um, is there a better way to do this? Uh, what we could do is use a flag variable to say whether we're going again. 
we know where we're going again because of these will be out of bounds. And then we can use the flag variable to decide whether the packet should be was or is here so that on the last loop round when we know that the delta is going to work it's going to fit in a single mouse packet then we use the current pressed state the effect there is in the situation where the user is pressing the left and then the right side of the screens the mouse pointer would be moved rapidly to the right then the mouse button goes down However, no, no, I don't like that either, because the f the first loop will be a move, the second loop will be a press, but the mouse pointer could still be moving very far, very rapidly. So if you if you start at coordinate zero, and you touch at five sixty, which is the right side of the screen, so the mouse we're going to get a move. Then we're going to get another move to 254 and move to 381, move to 508, and then the mouse button will go down as the mouse pointer moves to 560. So the last delta will be a big drag and I think that is wrong. So this I believe is more correct. And I think no, let's leave it like that. So this will always be a move and a press. When dragging with the stylus down, this means that every move, every mouse motion will be a drag with the mouse down and then a zero delta which should be cheap so does this build apparently it does uh, that's an air spite for it because it's signed That's better. And let's send it and see what happens. Okay, and run. I'll optimistically grab the stylus. Okay, it started. Find the program. There, okay. Touch. Of course, of course, it's not working. Okay, let's try the mouse click. Fantastic. We're still not seeing the. XBIOS calls come through. I did save this. What's this? Oh, good grief. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the 
this particular piece of code. However, yeah, the day node has no TT shifter, no videl, no DSP, no DMA sound. So last entry will be OX40. So the entire table will be the wrong size. Let's try this one again. Uh, although that was not the only bug, so Let's just do that. And let's see what happened now. Okay, well, the good news is I can see DXs and DYs appearing. But the numbers very quickly went all the way up to the maximum possible. 560 by 159. Of course, it hasn't been calibrated yet. So... SX and SY should be zero. We should still get an actual mouse touch. Okay, well, let's try keyboard, mouse click. Right, it's, it's now calling raw read. It's the third one. And this is the calibration vector that it's set, which is invalid. So, okay, so we are actually getting somewhere. Is this the right value for a left click? Well, actually, I stole this from the Amiga, so we should be able to So button one, the left button is two, hang on. Wait, that goes in the opcode byte? Fair enough. I'll explain why that wasn't working. Okay, let's try this. Okay, so execute. program
I'm heartily sick of that mouse keyboard. Uh, keyboard mouse. Okay. Oh, we got something. So here are our calibration numbers, which all look completely bogus. So, and screen calibration zero is zero. That's not right. But I can see all these numbers are approximately correct. Let's just change this to SX and SY since we know the deltas look. Actually, let's not. Let's just add these. Okay, so where is our calibration code? Here we go. Now, these look like complete junk. So why are they complete junk? This should be a pointer to an array with seven elements. Is there something funny about the calling convention I need to check up on? It doesn't look right to me. However, the big printf in the middle is making it hard to read, so by removing it, I get much simpler code. So you see there it is fetching the pointer parameter of the stack. The C compiler has figured out. Wow, that's pretty cunning. So it's managed to figure out what I'm doing and it's removed the loop counter completely. That's I. Notice there's no seven in any of that code. What it's done is it's here it's loading the screen calibration address into A0. It's figured out that the loop terminates at the seventh element, therefore it's reusing the destination pointer as the loop counter, which this comparison here is doing. So the entire loop has become one, two, three, four instructions. That's not bad. Okay, so here I can see it's called TS Calibrate. So we receive a long pointer and we just pass it into TS Calibrate. Is that valid? Um, I do not see a lot of addresses in here. Uh, here's one. That's a pointer, here's one. Okay, so you're obviously allowed to do that. So this is calling TS Calibrate, which is in 
BIOS mouse here. So if I go and look at that code, it's just to jump. It's left the parameter on the stack. And likewise, if we go into xbios, uh, here's the TS Calibrate shim. There's just a simple trampoline that displays the uh, a message when an XBIOS thing comes in. Here it is. Wait. Uh, that's pushing D2. All right, this is then loading our pointer into D2, which is at stack pointer plus eight because this has pushed the old D2. We then push this string called kprintf. We retract over the old value of D2. I am not sure what that code's doing. I'm going to assume it's correct. Ah, right. This is... no, no, sorry. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I understood it, but I didn't. Okay, I'm just going to assume that's correct. If we turn this off, then all that code will disappear. Well, most of that code will disappear. And instead, our jump table will point at the actual functions. So the other thing that could be wrong is, it's in tools, is that we are incorrectly calling the trap. You see, I do believe that's pretty much right. Um, I've given it that command line will build the program as a object file so I can find the code. Here it's doing the c compilation. FP minus 34 is the address of the pointer. Push onto the stack. Push the uh, the trap, uh, the the opcode, which is one four three, which is eight f, call the trap. But the numbers we got back were complete garbage. It's possible that one reason why they were complete garbage is because raw read this was returning complete garbage. Now, I just happen to notice that this is passing in the addresses of the TX variables, which are longs, but I think the values are actually shorts. So,
So I think we want to do that. And I need to copy the new program to the SD card. Okay, so once again we run the program. And let's try calibrating. Right, and we now get an actual calibration vector. Let's see if it works. That would be a no. So the SX and SY coordinates are garbage. But as I move the mouse, you can see them move going in cycles, so... Right, so what could be wrong here? Uh, this is returning three shorts, as far as we are aware. Raw read here is passing back three shorts, as far as we're aware. Which is fine because pen send receive returns a unsigned word. Or does it return a signed word? I believe from memory it is ret it is returning a uh, a word from zero to uh, three two seven six seven. So is it this calibration that's wrong? Be nice if we had printf's in this program because then we could just dump what. Dana Cal thinks the vector should be, so that then we can then make sure it's getting to the BIOS intact. Uh, let me have a look at that document, which is this. So, C index is a signed long. Uh, the actual coordinates themselves are signed uh, int, that is short on this platform. This is the 8-bit the PSOC. The other question, of course, is did I transcribe this code incorrectly? Don't think so. Are we doing the reverse mapping incorrectly? So all these should be promoted to longs as far as I'm aware. It's this code here. Let's 
Screen calibration is a long, signed longs. I believe they're signed longs. Signed longs. So this vector looks incredibly dodgy to me. These numbers do not like do not look like sensible numbers of any description. So either they are making it to the BIOS incorrectly or we are incorrectly calculating them. Okay then. Let's try this in our name, see if we can get some tracing out. Forgotten to run this. And nothing appears, to no one's great surprise. Uh, what happens if I run this from here? Dana Cow. Click, click, click. Excellent, we get numbers. So that should be percent %d, uh, that should be a percent %l for a long. Oops, uh, console. And because, of course, Aronim doesn't have the touchscreen X BIOS calls, nothing happens. Excellent. So now I need to deploy this onto the Dana. So now let's try running it from the console. And touch. And we get a completely blank screen with no information. Fantastic. That's helpful. In fact, it's crashed. Whoopee. So I'm guessing that isn't going to work. Um, the numbers law look still all still look wrong. So I would expect the X divisor to be negative because the touch screen has low numbers on the right and high numbers on the left. I would wait, hang on. Is that allowed? Looking at the reverse mapping code. Uh, yes, it is. So uh, C1 would have to be negative, which it's not. Yeah, I think these, I think these calibration numbers are garbage. Um, I wonder if I can persuade this to write to the BIOS. So the data's actually shown up on the screen, but then the system dies and it all goes away. 
uh, because we can see that this trap has been executed, otherwise we wouldn't get this. So where else can I put the data? Well, we can put it to a file. and see what happens. Actually, no, I bet there isn't. I think that will do fine. Okay, so it runs. Well, it, comp it compiles, so I'll deploy it and see what happens. Okay. Dana Cal. Ooh, it crashes! Privilege violation. That's... Uh, uh, 198FE is indeed... in the kernel one nine eight f is in the gem dispatcher uh, if I'm running it from the VDI that shouldn't actually be being called but luckily the system survives and we have our cal.txt which is empty So, assuming something to do with the trap has killed it, what happens if we don't do that? So we should just be able to run it again without rebooting. Uh, it's spotted that I changed the uh, the card. You can see it reinitialize the um, card driver. That's a good crash. So we restart it. Cal.txt is still empty. I do not think that Stud.io is working particularly well in this binary, to be honest. Though I couldn't tell you why. Well, apart from the fact that it's probably using uh, mint specific calls that don't exist on plain toss it doesn't seem to like printf
I wonder, is this not... I mean, we're, we're not declaring very much data on the stack. That shouldn't be a problem. I don't think anything could be corrupting it. We do have the right number of values. Seven longs, zero to six. Well, we can take it off the stack. Actually, I'll put that back. We can take this off the stack like that. Now, if we dump it, we can see that uh, we need to rebuild the version for disassembly. So here it's doing the computation, and after each value, it's doing a write to absolute address. Here it's doing the F open, here it's doing the printf, so it'll be reading out of that address. That will be here. Yeah, it, it relaxed this computation into an add, which is correct. So it's interesting that Aronim ran it, but uh, the real hardware didn't. Okay, well, let's try this. Actually, I will put this back on. Okay, so run it. It crashes again, so no one's got a great surprise. It still hasn't written anything. Although, n now I think of it... We should be seeing the printf happen to this console, which mirrors the one on the screen. So I've compiled and deployed to this, so we should be able to run that again. But we did not see anything here. And the boards crashed completely. So we're clearly corrupting memory somewhere. Now we could be... Could we be doing it here? I mean, these will be addresses to... Addresses of these stack variables. That should be uncontroversial. So, you see, we're using VQ mouse to do exactly the same thing. These are slightly long. These are, these are getting the addresses of things on the stack using the frame pointer. So here we are, wait, trap 14, WLLL. This has generated no code. Do 
Why has it done that? Fourteen W L L L. Okay, it's marked as volatile, so it should be generating the that instruction regardless of. Oh right, it's down here. Okay, that's a bit of a. That's actually a little bit annoying because had that been a problem, it would have been easily fixable. But we are pushing three values onto the stack. They're all 32-bit pointers. That looks fine. Then we call the trap. Then we retract over the values we pushed onto the stack. Multiply target by four. Pull load x. Write it to the tx array. Do the same for y. Okay, nothing controversial there. So unless passing parameters through x bios doesn't do what I thought it did. We can do a little bit of verification here. So, let's deploy this and see what happens. Okay. So here we can see the three parameters, x, y, and state, are in, are close to each other. State is first, followed by x and y which is exactly what we'd expect for three values on the stack. So the board's crashed. Here is the pointer to the calibration vector, which again looks reasonably fine. So let's try taking out both traps and seeing if this still crashes. It does indeed still crash. So that's a completely ordinary program that is as far as I can tell not doing anything particularly dodgy. So, so let's just start commenting stuff out until it works. Luckily, TOS is reasonably robust for a non-memory protected system, so we don't need to reboot it every time. So that worked. So is something wrong with this computation? 
What could possibly be wrong? It's just per it's just maths. Well, let's start putting that back in. So that's worked. It does appear to be the case it doesn't like this computation. So I think I want to compare th this carefully So C index is assigned long array, here is assigned long array, zero. Uh, Tx, Tx zero minus Tx two times Ty one, Ty two minus Tx one, Tx two times Ty zero Ty2 SX0, SX2 um, Yeah, I'm just going to skip past this bit because it's going to take me forever Yeah, it looks okay to me So let's just try examining some of the code So there are the printf's, and here is the first line of the computation. So these are longs. Then it's it's calling an external function to do the multiplication. Again, all longs which is stashed in A3. Uh, it hasn't actually done the multiplication yet. So that's TY1 Subtract ty2 from ty1. Yeah, that's done this bit here. Push. Let's do does the other subtract. Then it does the multiplication. Retract over the parameters. Do stuff with the result. <laughs> So maybe it just doesn't like the multiplication. Maybe I'm using the wrong... So there are several different calling conventions for the Atari ST. Maybe my toolchain just doesn't work properly because it's not set up correctly. But it is working on... It is working on uh, Aronim, which I should be able to demonstrate for you. And 
here we have numbers. They still look pretty wretched, actually. Uh, however, given that uh, this trap is producing garbage, let's just actually do that okay you can see it's uh, it's writing the text and immediately clearing the screen sadly and i don't think doing it from the cons the console will help I can just see small integers. Yeah, you can see the last set here, followed by the result. I'm confused and I'm out of time, so I am going to call it here and go and see if I can figure out if there's anything wrong with the toolchain. The only thing I can think of is these multiplications. weird weird anyway i hope you enjoyed this video let me know what you think in the comments and hopefully we'll see what happens next time